Okay, um, rear chill post mount, where we're up to is I've um, milled up a cube on the bridge port, um, uh, broken all the edges, and uh, I've surface ground the top and bottom faces, which is that dimension there. Um, so as I mentioned previously, that dimension is meant to be 46 millimeters. It doesn't have to be particularly precise because of the amount of adjustment that I have um, on the tool post or on the tool holder. Um, but we'll just have a look at where we're up to. Um, and it's, it's fairly accurate as it is. So it's, it's about 10 microns under 46 mil. Oops. Let's put awkward holding this in in front of the camera. But there we go. That's the dimension there. 46. Well, it's 45.98 uh, eight maybe, if we're estimating where we are between the divisions. Um, and it's pretty good for parallelism. So as you'd expect, because it's it's been on the magnetic chuck of the surface grinder. As long as it goes down clean, um, it comes off pretty, pretty good. There we go. And it's within microns uh, of parallelism, which is good. That's the main thing. I'd, I'd like it to be parallel, um, and it is. So, um, so as I said, those two faces are surface ground. The rest are all milled at the moment, uh, edges broken. And the next step is to um, sink a hole through here to mount the tool post. So that's the next job. And I'm gonna chuck that up in the lathe, in the fore jaw, and uh, we'll put that hole through in a second. So I've chucked up the work in the, in the fore jaw. Um, and as you can see, I've got a dead centre here held between the centre pop uh, that I made in the workpiece and my live centre here held in the tailstock. And as I rotate the chuck now, you'll see that the dead centre swings around a little bit like that. Um, so it's probably running out within about five mil, something like that. So I'll get the dial gauge on now and then we'll start clocking it in and um, getting that centre mark nice and central. Right, so we've got the dial gauge in place. Um, I've put about three millimeters preload onto the dial gauge. So I need to make an adjustment now. So um, let's wind this jaw back and then we'll adjust this front one. So you can see how much run out's in there at the moment. So we'll just take it steady. A little bit closer. There's something quite therapeutic about uh, clocking the four jaw in. I don't know if anyone else relates to that, but maybe I need to get out more. So the key to clocking something in with a four jaw is to get the opposites balanced. Uh, it, you know, so um, 
I'd, I'd balance this jaw with the opposite jaw and same with this one and that one so um, but when you've got quite a lot of run out um, you know you can afford to take some big slices off in terms of adjustments Now I'm going to do what I'm going to do is divide the error in half, and then that will be my adjustments. So it's fairly close now. When I get to this stage, I won't bother loosening off the opposite jaw. I'll just tighten it, and then it's got a firmer grip. within 10 microns which is fine um, because uh, I've only put the center punch mark in by eye anyway so there's no point worrying about 10 microns when I've probably positioned the center pop within 0.1 anyway so that will do us for now um, on with the next step which will be to put the hole through um, so I'll do that now and then I'll get the boring bar out and I'm going to machine the counterball So that's the, the central hole drilled and tapped and I've bored out the counter bore uh, to receive the bung which is going to locate um, this tool post onto there like that so that will hold it in uh, X and Z and then um, so quick sneak preview if I screw that cap screw in. Kind of what we've got so far so we've taken shape next step is to turn the bone um, and then that's that bit done that's the rear tool post so far um, or the mount I should say with the um, the peewee tools AA tool post on and I've put the parting um, holder on as well just um, to show what we've got so far and how it's going to look
okay that's the diameter turned on this little bun now uh, so before I put the hole through it I'm just going to check um, the fit of the two bits so uh, it's measuring 1801 um, so it's going to be a snug fit um, the uh, can you see that yeah so that bore I've measured at 1801 um, so I want it to be a really nice tight fit onto this tool post so this is the inner bit from the uh, AA tool post. So I'll try that on now. So that's snug, that's really snug. This is what we want really, so that's good. That's good, so that fits fine. Um, this piece is slightly bigger, the counter bore in this, so we'll try that now. Yeah, I can feel this one's a little bit looser. There's a little bit in there, but it's not a lot. Maybe 10 mics. Okay, right, let's sink a hole through it and then I'll part off. We're making some progress. So, um, so here's the block um, up to this stage. So. Uh, the holes drilled and tapped, got the counter bore there. We've made this little uh, bung, and um, so that fits nicely. So we'll put this together now. That's a nice fit in there. Let's put the tool post on. That's a nice fit. Uh, let's put this on here now. Put this back on. Right, let's put the screw through. Just nip that finger tight and drop the tool holder on. Loosen that. There we go. Right. Okay, so that's that together. There's one step remaining, which is um, to I need to drill and pin the tool post onto the, the block so under there we've got these three holes uh, so I just need to figure out which of those it is that will line up to a hole position that will be you know either 12 o'clock six o'clock three o'clock or nine o'clock so in one of those orthogonal positions I'll probably put it um, either 12 or six o'clock um, there's going to be a screw hole here. If there isn't going to be one there, um, there'll be one slightly further over. Um, so we'll we'll get that figured out, and then but that'll be uh, that'll be an operation to go on the on the mill when I put these other holes through. So it's coming along nicely. So the next step for this is I'll uh, I'll put this up in the mill. I'll put these two holes through M6 clear. Um, this hole I might counterbore. This one um, I'll probably do at the same time as well. So it's probably best to do that all together. The only reason I was thinking of not doing that at this stage is is um, waiting to see how this section here turns out that I'm going to machine away uh, because that's going to determine the height of the the counterbore um, or the depth of the counterbore, I should say. These hatched marks here that I've just scribbled on in pen, um, that's where I'm thinking of um, taking a, a facet off there. Um, I hadn't, couldn't decide whether I'd um, prefer to, to bring it further over or not. Um, just put that in there just to indicate 
what my thought is. So I had thought about bringing this line further over, um, just you know, close to the edge of where the tool post is, so it's so that this is fully supported. Uh, but just to clear some material away, it's not really functional. It doesn't need the clearance. Uh, I'm just debating what look what looks best really. Um, so. Yeah, just weighing it up. I'll probably mill it to this angle here first. Um, and then I can decide if I want to take more off. Whereas if I've already taken it off, then I can't put it back on. So, yeah, they're the next steps.